Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. We live in a time where we often don't have the time to shoot our own videos, take our own photos, or record our own music, which is why there are so many stock media sites that we can choose from. One of my favorites is Shutterstock, not because I use it all the time, but because they made this great extension that works directly within Final Cut Pro 10, where you can peruse their content and add it right to your timeline from the extension. Let's check it out. To locate the Shutterstock app, go to the Mac App Store and type in Shutterstock. Now I've already downloaded this app, so I'll click open. A window informs me that the extension has already been installed in Final Cut Pro 10. So what do I mean by an extension? Let's jump into Final Cut Pro for the answer. Now I need a pirate ship image to go with this pirate theme title I'm working on. To access Shutterstock's vast library of content, I don't need to use a web browser. I simply click this puzzle piece icon and choose it from a list of apps to bring up a floating window that contains the Shutterstock UI. It's called an extension because Shutterstock's library becomes an extension of your workflow. There are basically three categories of assets you can search for and download using the extension app. There's footage, there's music, and there's images. All of it's curated for you, so for example, if you click on images, It'll bring up a number of different textures and backgrounds that you can preview, download, and ultimately place right into your Final Cut Pro projects. But I'm looking for something specific, so I'm going to go up here to the top, choose Photos, and in the search menu, I'm going to type Pirate Ship and press Return. The app searches its database of content and returns hundreds of Pirate Ship images. You can see this is just one of hundreds of pages of Pirate Ship images. Now, I'm not going to download all of these, but I am interested in previewing a few of them in Final Cut Pro to see how they work with my graphic. If I move my mouse over each image, you'll see two buttons. The first is a button that allows me to download a preview image, and the other is a button that will allow me to add the image to what Shutterstock calls a collection. It's basically a light box of saved images for reviewing later. I'm going to peruse these images to find one I like. This one will do, so I'll click the preview button. A preview image downloads to a dedicated library that Shutterstock automatically creates for me in the Movies folder on my hard drive. Inside the library is an event labeled Images that contains keyword collections of preview images, licensed images, and Shutterstock images. Any preview image you download appears in the preview keyword collection. If I move the window out of the way, you can see that it's a watermarked image. I'll download a few other preview images. I like this one, and this one. The extension window takes up a large portion of the screen, and it's pretty much covering the Final Cut Pro 10 UI, which is why I created a workspace for this window. I'm going to close the Shutterstock extension, and under the Window menu, I'm going to choose Workspaces Shutterstock. Mark will show you how to create this custom workspace in an upcoming Under 60 episode. The Final Cut Pro UI is reconfigured, placing the Shutterstock extension window off to the left, and my Final Cut Pro window to the right, so I can see both windows side by side. Back in the Shutterstock image library, let's take a look at my preview images. So I have three preview images that I've downloaded, and I want to try them out in this timeline. Before I do, I want to set the spatial conform, which is currently set for fit. I'll select all of them and choose fill, so that when they're added to the project, there won't be any pillar boxing. The next thing I want to do is create an audition out of these photos. I'll right-click on one of the selected clips and choose Create Audition. An audition clip is created. You can tell by the badge. And I'm going to just drag this clip into my timeline. A window appears telling me that I'm moving the photos from one library to the other, which is true. The photos must be copied to the library that contains a project. I'll click OK. Now I'll park my playhead over this composite in the timeline. When I drag this opacity slider to the left, you can see it's revealing the image directly below. Now down here, I'm going to reveal three different images in the audition clip, and then use my left arrow, then tap through them to see which photo I like better. I kind of like this one, so I'm going to click Done. OK, let's say that this pirate ship is the final image I want to go with. I certainly can't share this project to YouTube or Vimeo with a watermark on it, so I need to purchase a licensed version of this image. So going back to the Shutterstock extension window, I'll click this little download button here, and it'll show me my preview history. Basically, all of the images that I've downloaded preview images for, and it'll also show me all the images that I've licensed. And these are the full res versions without the watermark. In order to license a preview image, you'll need to select the image. 
then click the License Image button. Now I'm not going to do this because I just don't want to pay for an image I don't plan on using. But the process is simple. You click the License Images button and you're taken to a page where you can choose your subscription plan. All Shutterstock assets that you purchase from Shutterstock are based on a subscription model with different pricing tiers. You can check out their plans on their website. So I'm going to go back and go to the License section because these are images that I've already licensed. In fact, they show up in the Images event in the library. And notice that they've already been tagged with the keyword License. So once you purchase an asset, it will automatically show up in the Licensed Keyword Collection. And there's my image right there. And notice it has no watermark. So all I need to do is grab this image, drop it on top of the existing one, and in the timeline, choose Replace from Start. And of course, I'm reminded that I'm moving the image between libraries. And the preview image is replaced with a high res license version. I'll need to change the spatial conform so the image fits my project resolution. And there it is. So I have my pirate ship image without the watermark. And I performed all of these transactions using the Shutterstock extension window. I never had to go out to the Finder and use a browser. It all happened right here within Final Cut Pro 10. So do you guys use stock media sites? Which ones do you use? And have you used the Shutterstock extension? Leave your comments below, subscribe, click the bell, and we'll see you next time.